So in a previous video, we looked at how we can import satellite images into Blender using Blender GIS. But the problem with Blender GIS is that when you measure distances at high or low latitudes, measurements are not accurate. This is because by default, Blender GIS uses the Web Mercator projection system. And on the surface of it, this projection system doesn't seem too bad. It seems to be representative of the surface of the Earth. But if we create these equally sized dots on the surface of the Earth, and then we unwrap using the Mercator projection, we can see that the dots change size and these ones that we see in the north and the south, the more extreme latitudes, have had their areas distorted. But it turns out we can solve this problem using a software called QGIS, which allows us to create what's known as an azimuthal orthographic projection. And this is a projection method where we get an orthographic view of the globe. On the left you can see QGIS, and on the right hand side you can see what this projection looks like in 3D. So using QGIS in combination with Blender GIS gives us much finer control over the process of importing data. So you can see here that I'm importing OSM data, height data, and satellite images from multiple different maps. And these data can be combined in a granular and modular way, in this case to form an archipelago of islands. And these maps can also be made very accurate over large areas using the correct earth curvature function in Blender GIS. So in this guide, I'm going to show you how to set up that map in QGIS and then export the various types of geographic data into Blender. QGIS, I'll put a link in the description. Um, I've been using uh, this version 3.36. You can download it from here for your platform. I believe it's supported on Mac, Windows, and Linux. So in order to set up a map, what I'm gonna first do is click on the new project button here in the corner, Control N. And you can see that we get like a blank canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on my XYZ tiles here, and I'm gonna to go to new connection, and I'm gonna use a mapping service just called Esri, and I'm gonna put a link to this in the description, but we need to copy this URL, paste it, in here and then give it a name. So I'm just gonna call mine Esri, you can call yours whatever you like. And then you should see the Esri tile pop up here and I'm gonna double click on that. And you can see that we get a map of the world and I can scroll in here to anywhere in the world and I'm gonna choose the island of Mykonos. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my project into a folder called Mykonos and I'm gonna call the file name Mykonos. I'm going to set up what's called the coordinate reference system. So by default, we're using this one called EPSG3857. And that's okay, but it's a Mercator projection, which means that we'll get some distortion at some points when we start to go into 3D. So what I'm going to do is I'm instead going to use what's called an azimuthal orthographic projection, and that's going to help us to eliminate distortions in the map. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to get a coordinate, and that coordinate is going to be the point on the globe where the orthographic projection is a tangent to the normal of the Earth. So that sounds confusing, but what, let's let's just go through it step by step. So I'm going to right click on Mykonos, copy coordinate, and then copy this EPSG4326 coordinate here, which is 3725, and that's a latitude and a longitude. Then I'm going to go over to my WKT reference here, which is the description of the azimuthal orthographic projection. And I'm gonna paste my coordinates. I'll, I'll put a link to this in the notes, but I'm gonna copy this first value here, which is gonna be the latitude. And then I'm gonna copy the second value here, which is gonna be the longitude. And I'm gonna just delete this comma. And there we go. This is our, what's called our WKT definition. Then I'm gonna to go to settings, custom projections. I'm gonna add a new one. I'm gonna call it Mykonos. Um, and I'm going to paste my definition into there. So this is what we had in the text file. You should see that these latitude and longitude are what you copied from the map. I'm going to press validate to check that it's valid, and it looks like it is. I'm going to press OK, I'm going to press OK, and it's going to load that into QGIS, but it's not actually going to apply it to this map. So what you need to do is click down here, and you need to scroll all the way down to user defined. For some reason, it creates two CRSs. I'm just going to use the first one, press apply, and the map should look pretty much the same, except you should see down here that it's got your user-defined CRS. So what you'll notice with this map type is that if you zoom out far enough, and I'm going to zoom out quite far and see pretty much the whole globe, you can see that we're now using a globe projection of the Earth. And this is really important for when we go into three-dimensional space because it means we're not going to have what's called Cartesian distortion. We're not going to be suffering from the downsides of the Mercator projection. So now we've set up the CRS and we've defined our mapping. What I like to do is define a point, which is the origin of that CRS. I'm going to go over here to the shapefile layer 
create a new shape bottle there, and I'm going to save that as origin. I'm going to set the geometry type to point, and I'm going to set my CRS to the Mykonos CRS that we just created. And then I'm going to press OK. So now in order to add a point, I need to click on this little pencil icon. Then I need to click on the add point feature. And I'm just going to add a point somewhere on the map. It doesn't really matter where. I'm going to press OK. Then I'm going to go to the vertex tool and I'm going to right click on that point. And when I do that, you should see that these two values pop up here in the vertex editor. And what I can do is I can double click on those values and I can set them both to zero. What that will do is it will put the point in the origin of the CRS that we established. So this Mykonos CRS, center of that world, is right here in the middle of Mykonos. Then what I can do when I'm finished is I can press the pencil icon again, and I can press save to confirm my changes. So that's pretty nice. Now what I want to do is draw a rectangle around the island, and I'm going to use that to define the area that I'm working on at the moment. So I'm going to click again on the shape file there, I'm going to go again and save it to my folder. I'm going to call this area one. I'm going to choose the geometry type line string this time. And I'm going to set the CRS again to my Mykonos CRS. I'm going to press OK. And then in order to edit this, I'm going to click again on the pencil and I'm going to click on the add line feature. And in order to draw a rectangle, I need to enable a different toolbar. So I'm going to right click on my toolbars here and I'm going to go to the shape digitizing toolbar. And you can see that that gives us a bunch of shapes to choose from. I'm going to choose the rectangle from extent. And then I'm going to click with my left click and I'm going to right click to set it down. And what that will do is it will draw a rectangle in that location around the island. And if you decide that you actually want to change the rectangle, it's a bit of a pain, but I'll show you how to do it. First thing we need to do is turn on snaps. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to turn on the snapping toolbar. I'm going to enable snaps by clicking on this magnet icon. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click again and I'm going to turn on the advanced digitizing toolbar. I'm going to click on this set square icon and then you should see this little thing pop up in the side. I'm going to go to the gear and I'm going to choose 90, 180, 270. And this is going to define the snapping for the vertices in this rectangle. So the next thing I'm going to do is click on the vertex tool and that's going to allow me to click and select the vertices. And you can see that it has some kind of snapping inferences here. If I, for instance, wanted to move this rectangle out this way, for example, I could click and drag along this x-axis. Then I could select this vertex down here and I could drag that along the x-axis and to lock it to an axis, for instance, if I wanted to lock it to the x-axis, I press Control Y, perhaps a bit counterintuitive, and I can use these as snapping points. So I'm going to click again on this point here I'm going to press Ctrl Y, then I'm going to snap it to this point again. And that's extended my rectangle to make it a little bit bigger. When I'm happy with my changes, I click again on the pencil icon and press save. And that gives us our rectangle. Okay, so now we've got this map, we can export it the correct scale to Blender. And to do that, I'm going to click on my Esri layer, I'm going to right click, press export, save as, and then I'm going to choose a rendered image. I'm going to disable create VRT. I'm going to select a file name, which is going to be area one because this is the first area that I've defined. I'm going to press save. For my CRS, I'm going to use my Mykonos CRS. The layer extent I'm going to use is going to be the area one. And down here in the resolution, I'm going to pick a number that gives me a something sensible for the columns and rows. Let's go with three. So that's going to give me a satellite image with a resolution of 6831 by 4491. And I'm also going to add that to the map. So with all those settings enabled, I'm going to press OK. And it's going to go through and it's going to extract that map using the Esri world imagery data set. Now what we can do is go over to Blender and if you haven't already installed the Blender GIS add-on I'll put a link in the description so you can go and get it. I'm going to delete the objects in the scene. I'm going to go to GIS, import the georeference raster and the raster that I'm going to import is going to be this one, area1.tiff and that's going to bring it into the space at the correct size. One thing that you'll want to do when you start this process is press N, go to the properties panel, go to view, and down here in the geo scene, turn on geo and proj and reset these to zero. I'm just hovering and pressing backspace. And what that will do is it will put the origin of the Blender world into the same place as the origin of the QGIS world. And if I press control A and apply location, then the origin will go into the center of the world as well. So that origin that we defined earlier, pink dot, is the same as the center of the world there. And what's nice here is that we can now take measurements from this map and they'll be accurate to Google Maps. So I can see here that this runway is about 
1918 meters. If I fly over here to Mykonos, turn on my satellite layers, see that the runway is the same length, although it does look a little bit wobbly in the Google Maps. So we have a map that we can trust in terms of dimensions now. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get height data for this island. So in order to do that, we're going to use a plugin. So I'm going to go here to my plugins menu, manage and install plugins, and I'm going to search for topography. And I'm going to use the add-on, which is called Open Topography DEM Downloader. I'm going to install that, press close, and then I'm going to click this icon here, and I'm going to select SRTM 30 meters. The extent I'm going to use is from the layer called Area 1, again a pink rectangle. And in order to use this, you need an API key. Go over to Open Topography, sign up for free, and then click Request an API key here. And you can just copy that, paste it into QGIS, and then press Run. And you can see that we get a height map of the island. And in this case, the white indicates the higher points, the black indicates the lower points. And the nice thing is, is that we can export this to Blender. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this SRTM layer. I'm going to go to Export, Save As. This time I'm going to choose Raw Data because I want height values that are greater than 1 my file name. I'm going to give it a file name which is area1 underscore height. Press save. I'm going to choose my Mykonos CRS. For my layer extent, I'm going to choose area1. And you can see that it's already chosen a sensible resolution for me. And I'm going to get an image that's 834 by 437. And then I'm going to press OK. That's going to export the height map. Then what I can do is go over to Blender and I can go to GIS, import, georeference raster. So I'm going to choose area one height. I'm going to choose DEM as displacement texture. I'm going to apply it to an existing mesh and I'm going to choose area one because that's the existing map that I have. I'm going to turn off clip to working extent. Subdivision I'm going to set to subserve and I'm going to turn on smooth relief and fill no data values. And then I'm going to press import. And you can see that as I do that, we seem to get some height for the island, but it's not at the best resolution. So what we can do here is go over to subdivision modifier, which is probably labeled DEM. And then I can turn this up to some Something a bit higher, for example, 10. And it takes a little while to load, but you'll see when you do that, you get a better resolution height data in your model. So that's quite nice. So using this method, we can also get OSM data from the map. And in order to do that, I'm going to use an add-on which is called Quick OSM. So I'm going to go back to my plugins menu, search for Quick OSM, install the plugin, press close. I'm going to turn off this height map layer for now and the one underneath it. And then I'm going to go to the quick OSM icon here and I'm going to run a query. I'm going to search for highway and this is going to give me access to the roads down here in this little box. I'm going to choose layer extent and I'm going to choose area one as my layer. So this is going to find all of the highways within this rectangle. So I'm going to press run query. It's going to go through and find all of those roads. And you can see here that on the map, it's indicated all of the roads in red. And we can export these to Blender as well. So if I click on these layers, I can find out which one I'm working with. I think it's this one here. It's the one that's a line icon that says highway. So I'm going to click on that highway icon. I'm going to go to export, save features as, and I'm going to choose shape file as the format. File name is going to be area one underscore highways. Press save. I'm going to use the Mykonos CRS that we defined earlier. Again, press OK. And now if I go to Blender, I can go to GIS, Import, Shapefile, and I can import Area 1 Highways. Press OK. And they should go underneath the island if it has any topography. But what I'm going to do is press the Move um, widget here, and then move the roads so that they are above the island. What we want to do is just project those roads down onto the surface. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over to the Modifier panel, and I'm going to add a Shrink Wrap modifier. I'm going to choose Project. I'm going to choose Z. I'm going to enable negative, and for my target, I'm going to choose the island. And that's going to project the roads straight down onto the island. Now, we can also give these roads a bit of a profile. So in order to do that, I'm going to bring up my timeline here, change it to the Geometry Nodes editor. I'm going to add a new Geometry Nodes, and I'm going to pull off this noodle here. I'm going to search for mesh to curve, and then I'm going to search for curve to mesh, and then I'm going to plug that into the output. And for my profile curve, I'm going to use a quadrilateral, and we can zoom in a little bit to see what effect this is having. Uh, my quadrilateral, I'm going to set to a width of 5, and I'm going to set it to a height of 1. And then I'm also going to, just before here on the out at the end, I'm going to type in set shade smooth, and I'm going to check this box here to give flat shading to my roads. So you can see that you can use this in order to um, get the road network for a geographical area, which is quite nice. We can also get
buildings for this island. So I'm going to go back to my quick OSM plugin and this time I'm going to type in building to the query. Again, I'm going to choose the layer extent of area one as my query area, run the query, and you can see that what it's done is it's gone through and in purple here, it's found all of the buildings um, within that area. And I think it's this layer here. So I'm just going to toggle that layer. Yeah. So select my buildings layer here. I'm going to go to export, save features as, and again, I'm going to save it as a shape file. This time I'm going to call it area one buildings press save. I'm going to choose the Mykonos CRS and I'm also going to add it to my map. So I'm going to press OK. We go back to Blender. This time what we can do is we go to GIS, import, shapefile, choose the building shapefile this time using this dialog, press OK. And this time we've got the buildings coming in. And again, they've gone to the zero level, so they're underneath the map. So I'm going to lift them up. And again, I'm going to add a shrink wrap modifier. I'm going to search for shrink wrap. I'm going to choose select project, I'm going to select Z negative, I'm going to choose the island as the target and that's going to snap those buildings onto the surface of the island. Then again, I'm going to add a new geometry nodes group here. We just want to extrude the buildings upwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off this noodle here, search for extrude and I'm going to extrude them to a height of say 10 meters. But what you'll notice is that they're coming off at the angle, the normal angle of the terrain, but we want them to go straight up. So in order to do that, I'm going to pull a noodle off the offset socket here, type in vector, set the vector to 001, and that will mean that the buildings go straight up. So what we can do is we can vary the height of these uh, buildings uh, based on their footprint. So if we search for face area, and plug that into the offset. You can see that it goes pretty crazy and we end up with a skyscraper situation. But if we use a map range node, plug that in instead, maybe set the maximum to uh, 15 and then uh, change the minimum value here, we can get like a nice range of heights. So buildings with a larger footprint will be taller and buildings with a smaller um, footprint will be shorter. And then that might give us a more kind of like realistic distribution. So one of the really handy things about this process is that if you decide that you want to include a larger map, for instance, to say I was to zoom out here to the extents of the Aegean Sea, and say I wanted to export that map and use it with the other one, well, I can do that. I can go in here, I can go to export, save as, use a rendered image, disable the ID. I'm gonna call this one area two. I'm not gonna set up the rectangle, but you can. I'm gonna choose my Mykonos CRS. Um, I'm going to use the map canvas extent this time. Choose a resolution that's raw, so something that will give me not too many pixels, and add that to the map as well. What I can do is I can go into Blender, I go to JS, import GeoReference Raster, and this time choose Area 2. I'm going to be careful to change my mode back to base map on in. I'm going to press Import GeoRaster. You can see this time we have a map, which is the entirety of the Aegean Sea, and the Mykonos is um, directly situated within that map. So you can see how it allows you to basically add to the map and in addition what we can do is if we go into edit mode and add a loop cut here by pressing ctrl r select all and subdivide a few times just to add a bit more geometry to this what we can do is we can go to gis mesh then we can do earth curvature correction this will actually curve the surface of that map match the curvature of the earth so if we were looking out to see for instance and we were considering the horizon the horizon is going to be at the correct height relative to where we are standing so just to show you how I took this further in the end, I ended up exporting OSM data for three uh, separate islands here. And I exported that data into Blender. So you can see here, we've got three islands. They all have topography, they all have um, OSM data, and they all are sitting relative to the map of the Aegean Sea.